Consumer discretionary companies are the biggest bet of CLOs. I was shocked when I heard that. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking a lot in the newsroom about, you know, it's, it's 2018 now. Think back to 10 years ago when a lot of this distress from the financial crisis, but really from the LBO boom, was starting to come into play. You're starting to see record leverage numbers. The, the number that jumped out at me uh, that is mentioned in the story is five point record ratio of 5.1 times. That's EBITDA to uh, debt. And, and it's going well, up. Or I mean, that, that's what really it. jumped out at me as well. Yeah. The, the number of turns on this stuff at this point. Right. And if anything, in part because of deregulation, things like, there's encouragement of more and more leverage. We're going in the opposite direction. And, and CLOs were somewhat insulated uh, during the crisis, too. So I just wonder, like, what kind of tra tranches do they have in it? Are investors yeah. aware of those kind of risks? And, and they may be totally fine. I'm just curious as to know when you wind up having a retail apocalypse can potentially spread to this area too. Well, and I'm also never, you know, too far away from talking about private equity, as you know. <laughs> and this is a case where a lot of this debt is being made, made available to private equity. Retail is a, to say the least, aggressive bet uh, right now. The Amazon effect that shows up everywhere uh, obviously has been hitting retail for a long time and yet you do have some private equity names continuing to go in even though there are cautionary tales everywhere. Which shows there's nothing new in the sun because you go back to 2005 that was the Toys R Us story. Of course. Yeah. And actually they went way leveraged up with private equity and how'd right. that work out? Now they're well, talking about liquidating. And, and the now yeah, now yeah. they may face bankruptcy. Okay.